Hello, my crafty friends. Tia Woodward here from Stamp with Tia. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Today I'm going to be demonstrating three cards that are utilizing the Rainbow of Happiness bundle from the Stampin' Up! January through June mini catalog. This catalog is good through the end of June. I am an independent demonstrator. I'm located in Vancouver, Washington. Um, in the United States. And I've been a demonstrator for a couple of years now. Sorry, I'm making clicky noises with the stamp set. Um, and I love being a demonstrator. Oh, hi, Sonia. Oh my gosh, thank you for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing it so much. So I have uh, three cards today that are non-standard rainbows. So they're not the traditional yellow, green, red, blue. They're different. So I'm excited to share them with you and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the camera down and get started. All right? All right. So here we go. <coughs> here are the See if I can do this without dropping my, there we are, we're clicked in, I think. Double checking for security, yep. And we appear to be straight, pretty much. The cards are a little off, but there we go. So we have three cards. One is utilizing, this one's looking rather beat up. There was an accident um, about an hour ago here in my craft room. Matter of fact, two accidents. It was so much fun. Can't wait to tell you about it as I'm going along. Um, but first, uh, the first card I'll be making is this one. I'll be utilizing some of our rose gold foil paper. And um, I'll be using blends to create the other two colors. Then I've utilized actually the same stamp set here. Um, and I'll, I'll give you all of those details. But I've used three different colors of blue or blue greens. And I just, I really like how this card turned out. It made me happy. And this one was supposed to be a heat embossed card. Um, unfortunately, I dumped the one, the gold pot everywhere in my carpet, in my toolbox, everywhere in the stamp set. <laughs> it was a mess. So anyway, I, then I switched over to the foil and I actually lost, see the piece that's all dented here? I couldn't find it anywhere. Looked and looked and looked. Finally just started to scrap this card and realized it was on the bottom of my foot, so that was fun. So we'll make one that's prettier than this one. Anyway, so those are the three cards that we're gonna make today. And I really like these. You know, you can make a very classy looking card or you can make it more whimsical. And I'm gonna show you kind of that the full spectrum. So I'm excited that you're here with me today. As I mentioned, the Rainbow of Happiness bundle is in the mini catalog. That's good January through the end of June. So if you like what you see today, you're not going to want to hesitate because the retired list for this catalog comes out later this week. And people tend to start snatching up things that they really, really like. So um, keep that in mind. I am using a couple of supporting characters in my crafting today. I've pulled this sweet little baby, One Happy Family, from One Happy Family. And for the life of me, I just, I'm going to check really quick. I think this is in the mini catalog. Did you know that at the back you could see a ca the, ca the catalog at a, um, somebody said something. Oh, hi, Polly. Had to try. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, it was, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, what can I say? <laughs> Craziness. Okay, one happy family. Okay, it's not in this. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not messing up here and that I haven't actually used something. I'm pretty sure 
that it's still active. I'm pretty careful about recycling, or um, not recycling, but moving everything around. Yeah, One Happy Family. It's in the annual catalog. Anyway, so I've pulled this sentiment. So I've used the same sentiment on both of these cards. Sweet little baby, One Happy Family. I've pulled that from this stamp set and this stamp set has a ton of great stuff in it i mean it's got goo goo gaga it's got um, i love your kind heart just be you sure do love you you know just it's got lots of nice little things in here this is the one that i use sweet little baby one happy family so i thought that that paired nicely with rainbow of happiness the other thing that i pulled from were the dies from the cup of tea um, bundle there are these little hearts and I used these on this first card so I just wanted to give you full disclosure that I did pull in a couple of other supporting characters and I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with this one first so did you know that if you dump your embossing powder in your carpet that you should not use your vacuum cleaner to clean it up like your regular um you know the big square thingy that you push around the floor because that actually heats up and it activates the heat in or activates the um embossing powder and makes it harden so the reason it took me so long to get online was because i had to use the hose there there's no rollers so i could suck it up out of the carpet without heating anything up and ruining the carpet. You like that story? <laughs> it's, yeah, it was fun. Whew. Anyway, all right. These cards are way more fun than that story, huh? So let me tell you a little bit about what I've got going on here. This card, uh, the card base, is four and a quarter by 11. All of these dimensions will be put on my blog, by the way. Scored it, whoops, scored it five and a half. You love pulling stamps from, so, yeah, right? I mean, it's just, it, it just like, it takes what you've got and expands it to like this in amount of infinity. It's pretty awesome. The card face is four by five and a quarter. And you'll see, I'm gonna put that up on dimensionals. And then the layer, I put one single layer on the inside without a border because I did, that's what the front was, right? It was nice and clean and sweet. So I did the same thing on the inside. So it's the same dimension. It's four by five and a quarter. Actually, it looks a little smaller. Looks like I must have gone three and a quarter by five. Anyway, so I will give you all of those dimensions, but um, those will be in my blog. To save time, I have die cut everything already. Um, I, because I wanted dimension, I wanted these to stand up, the, the um, arcs from the rainbow, to stand up from the card base. I did use foam adhesive sheets. So those are already cut and sitting here waiting for me to do something with them. But there's two cut from the rose gold and then two from Very Vanilla. That's what I forgot to tell you, is that I'm using Very Vanilla. So like I mentioned, four and a quarter by 11. And then here are my two pieces. I'm missing, there we go. I've got all my little foil hearts and everything are already cut out too. Um, wanted to tell you that for the first time, I had a chance to use my new magnetic uh, plate for my stamp and cut and emboss machine and it worked amazing it was so good so how this works when you're using <laughs> and I've got hearts all stuck to me my hands must be a little sweaty from rushing no doubt um, so this is what a adhesive sheet looks like and it basically a dimensional it's thicker than a dimensional, but it's basically like a dimensional and it's got <clears throat> the um, backer on both sides. So what you do is you apply that to your cardstock, to the back of your cardstock before you run it through your die cutting machine. So I did that same process with 
the very vanilla, and then I did it with the um, rose gold. So that is already done. You don't have to watch me do that. <coughs> and I'll set that aside. The other thing that I used was behind this sentiment is I used adhesive foam strip. It's the same as the adhesive foam sheets, except cut in strips. And I did that because they're the same thickness. And again, I will show that to you. All right. So <clears throat> because I didn't want to waste what I had foam cut, oh, that's what I need to do. I need to show you the die. So this was the die that I used to cut the rose gold and to cut the very vanilla. Use your magnet sheet today too. Oh my gosh, right? It is, it's really cool. It held things really, really well. <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was impressed to be um, really honest. So when you cut this, you can't cut out just one arc at a time. You have to cut out the whole thing. So I had four arcs of the rose gold and four arcs of the very vanilla. So what I'm going to do for the card that I'm making in, with you is these are going to be opposite. I'll be rose gold and then my colors. Just explaining why it will be slightly different. Not tremendously different, but just a little bit. Pulling in my piercing mat that I like to, to work on. At this point, it's funny because I used to use it because I had a textured surface here. Now I have a flat surface here, but I'm so used to using it that <laughs> I'm sticking with it. All right, I am going to put on... So basically, this turns into a sticker with a foam dimensional built in. That's kind of what you end up with. So I am going to... Very carefully, I see something here. What do I see? Looks like some of my adhesive strung around to the front. There we go. All right. So I wanted enough room for to have some hearts trail off the top. So I'm gonna place this just a little bit lower than center. Not too terribly low, but just a little bit lower than center. And I'm kind of eyeballing it from side to side. And there we are. So there's our first arc. Now the second arc is actually gonna be colored. And what I'm gonna do before I take the backer off of it, I'm going to use blender pen and I'm gonna use the light. So your blender pens come in duos. Um, a light and a dark. I'm going to use the light for both of the colors that I'm using. In this case, I'm using the light cherry cobbler, and I'm going to use the brush tip. And I am... So I played around with my colors earlier. All different colors of red and pinks to see what I liked with my rose gold. And this is what I came up with. And I will actually go over it twice. This one layer was just not quite dark enough. So one more time. This is, I mean, it's so easy. Now earlier, I was being a little careless. And I ended up coloring the foam on the side. In, in one area. So then I just went back and I fixed it and just evened it out all the way around. And you can't even tell on the card. So it was an easy fix. And I just did it again, but it's not gonna be as big of a deal because it's hidden in between. So I'm gonna cap that. You know, I might as well just go ahead and color the other one while I'm at it. The other one I'm using Light Magenta Madness, or no, excuse me, Magenta Madness. Silly me, that, that retired. I am using Light Melon Mambo. That MM thing. I 
I didn't want to go with the darks. It just didn't match the aesthetic that I was going for. There's nothing wrong with it. Just, I wanted something, I had something else in my mind. So my husband and I, the reason I wasn't live the other night is we had friends from out of town. My husband and I are involved in boat racing and we were lucky enough that a event took place here in our hometown. We don't normally have one here in our hometown. And it was an exhibition. It wasn't an actual race, it was an exhibition. But our friends came from out of town. So that was such a blessing to see them. It was so, it was just wonderful. All right. I'm going to place. And I'm gonna grab my, take my pick tool and pick up this end and try to position, there we go. There we go. I think that wasn't too hard. Famous last words. And then I'm gonna take my, oh, this one has a little something sticking out too. Anyway, that's why I was not live on Thursday or Friday. And normally those events don't take place on those days, but this time they did. It was just an exhibition. And I tell you what, it was like medicine for the soul to see our friends. Is that cute so far? I mean, look at how fast this is coming together. All right. So this was light cherry cobbler. This was light melon mambo. Just like that. So that part is done. Um, one of the things that I meant to mention and that I forgot to mention was that these three make and takes um, I will send to anybody that makes a purchase of $35 or more. And um, I just realized I don't even have it in front of me. Also, um, this month I have a May tutorial bundle that has 36 projects in it. I did one of them. I worked with a bunch of other people. And I will, if there's a purchase of $50, I will send that for free. So if you make, do make a purchase of $50, I will combine the two and you will get the, you know, I hope I didn't cut that strip too narrow. I don't think so, but maybe. Um, you will get both. Okay, this is gonna be interesting because I think I worked with a bigger piece of paper previously. Wish me luck. I think it's too high. I cut more than one. I actually think I can get away with that. Ooh, lucky, lucky. Getting my stamp off because I'm gonna use it again. Closing up my ink pad because gracious knows I've already had enough accidents today. I'm going to take my paper snips. Last time I cut it, I'm gonna cut it opposite this time. Opposite direction. You know how sometimes the first card you make, you discover what you didn't like about it? So you kind of switch things up. There we go. That's not bad. Got lucky, lucky, lucky. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, there is, um, a, I used the <laughs> foam adhesive sheets. So I'm using a foam adhesive strip on the bottom of my sentiment. Gosh, that's not perfectly straight, but it's really close. So I am going to, here's, I have some strips that were kind of already shortened going to eyeball so I'm 
putting it along one side there and just trimming one of the strips there we go and the top of the sentiment is actually going to sit on the rainbow but the bottom is going to sit below it See, this is going to make it so that the bow, the bow doesn't cover up the word family like it did on my last one. So about like that appears to be straight. Then I have all of these hearts that I can do something with. So I've got five. Yep five hearts that I will lay out. This one's going to get a mini dimensional on it, the big one. It was wonderful to see our friends. and It was uh, just an enjoyable day. We laughed and laughed and laughed. I can't even think of the last time I laughed that much. Well, probably since last year, boating season, <laughs> to be honest. All right, I'm gonna place a few of these around each other, whoops. And then I will pick them up with my, take my pick tool, take your pick tool. Put a dot of glue on them and then place them back where I want them at. Okay, something, al something along those lines. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this one in place first. And the Take My Pick tool has this clay end that's sticky, so you can, yeah. It's gonna make a liar out of me. Oh, you know what? I bet it got some of that embossing powder on it, <laughs> like everything else did. Good thing I found that now. Okay, turn that back over. Expose my putty. Yep, there we go, that's better. Whew. All right. So I'm gonna place this somewhere right around there. So my husband and I, we've kind of just rather had a, well, it, ooh, that's a lot of adhesive. Uh, we were intending to have a quiet day until I dropped that embossing powder. Then it wasn't so quiet around here. Come on. I am starting to calm down now that I'm crafting. That's what crafting does for me. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's fun. I've got glue on my finger, on my thumb. There we go. One more, and then I'll make a bow. We're really close to done with this card, actually. And I'll show you how I decorated the inside. Come on, please. Yeah, that it's true. It's kind of like, um, like when I go hiking, I can't think about a computer or any of that other stuff, right? I mean, it just, it all goes away and crafting does that for me as well. You're exactly right. All right, I'm going to tie a bow out of this baker's twine. And this is from the baker's twine essentials pack. And there's a couple of different neutrals, a few different neutrals 
and you can see this one is just a little bit more yellow and it's a, a richer tone. That's the one that I picked to use for this. Yeah, exactly. It's my stress reliever too. And I'm so grateful for it. I wanted to show you that when I tie a bow with Baker's Twine, I go ahead and I cut both ends. Not every crafter does it this way. I like to do it that way because I feel like it releases the twist and it makes it easier for me to tie a nice bow right off the bat. Now let's see if I do that now that I've said that out loud. <laughs> and here we go. If I can grab a hold of it correctly and give it a nice pinch. There we go. So Baker's Twine and Linen Thread both have a twist in them. Uh, before they're even rolled onto the spools that they come on. There we go. I think that's a nice looking bow, about equal on both sides. I'm going to apply that right there, ish. It's still going to cover up family. Oh well, I gave it a shot. I'm looking for my mini glue dots. There they are. I'm going to grab one with my the pick side of my take my pick tool and I'm going to put it at the end of that last rainbow arc. Well, yes I am. It says that I'm not, but I am. I promised I did I did wash my hands before this. I'm not sure why everything is sticking to me. Today is our first warm day in a while. Even yesterday was quite a bit cooler than today. Okay, come on. So, I like to take the middle two strands and cut those a little bit shorter. Cut them at the same time. So, about like that. And then I take the long, the other two strands I should look through my camera and make sure you can actually see me. Yeah, you can see me. There we go. All right. There is our card front. So now I can apply that to the front of our card base. Slide that to one side. Move these extra hearts off the table. I will save those for another time. All right, my bone folder. And I will burnish my score line. Oh, I'm obviously being a little aggressive. So there is that. I'm going to flip this over and put some dimensionals. on the back. Yeah, let's see, what else can I tell you? We had some amazing food at a, at a local restaurant last night that was kind enough to allow us to use their beachfront for the hydroplane event. And we had a, a group of seven of us at dinner last night with wonderful food, wonderful dessert, and the bestest company there was. Okay. Oh, I am going to put one more little heart right over the knot of that bow, but I'll do that after I adhere this. And this is always a little bit fun to do. Stretched out in front of myself here. I think that's straight-ish. Ish. Grab one more of my little hearts. I did try the big heart earlier and I didn't like what it looked like. 
it was just too big. I, 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 something in between would have been awesome, but the little one works good. So I've just rolled up a glue dot. And I hope I didn't just change the shape of my heart. No, I didn't. Okay. I'm going to turn this around since I've got this picked up differently. And I'm going to apply my heart right there. Turn it back around. Am I making you dizzy yet? You know what? That almost doesn't feel like that's attached. It's not. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now it is. Goodness gracious. Oh no. It's... Hmm. It is. Okay. Whew. All right. So let me show you what how I decorated the inside of the card. Isn't that pretty? The outside of the card? I think it's cute. So, in this stamp set from Rainbow of Happiness, you see all these little textures? I took these little hearts. And grab my Melon Mambo, which I set aside prematurely. And get these adhesive backs out of the way. All right. And I am going to do a little test stamp on my paper here to make sure my hearts are going the right direction. They are. So I'm just going to stamp the hearts right down the side and I'm just going to turn them a little bit that way, a little bit this way. Oh, shadow. I, I uh, somehow ended up with a little bit of extra ink on there. So I'm going to clean that off with my chamois and start over. And I'm gonna move that stamp closer to the edge. There we go. So see, I've moved it closer to that edge. I'm gonna have better control that way for me. Doesn't work the same way for everybody. I'm making a mess. Okay. I do not see the ink on this thing, but I clearly have some because I am making a mess. It must have been on there from before. Okay, I'm just going to go with the original side. I'm alternating back and forth. Just creating a little border and then I'm going to go in with my sand eraser and try to fix that. So clean this because I am going to be using that on the next stamp set as well or next card as well. Close that melon mambo and I'm actually I'm going to wash my hands really quick with my chamois to make sure I don't have anything else on there. Okay, and my sand eraser is right here. I might not be able to make it go all the way away. I might only be able to lighten it. I am cons making it considerably lighter. Okay, I think you get the point. And it looks like I would actually be able to make it go all the way away. But I'm not going to take up more of your time. I'm going to go ahead. Okay, I feel adhesive over there. I'm going to adhere this to the inside of the card. I did do all of the die cutting for all of the cards. And a quick sip. Take 
this and just center it on the inside of the card. And I, I really like how I didn't use a mat on the inside. Normally I do. If you've been watching me at all, I like to mat everything. But because the outside was such a clean finish, I wanted the inside to be the same. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, that's card number one. Let's move on to card number two. Let's get a couple things out of the way. And... <coughs> oh, excuse me. How about a throat, throat soother? Beautiful, beautiful day today. Love it. All right. So same thing here. When, I'll show you the die. Here it is. When you die cut out your arc, arches or arcs of light or color, you end up cutting out all four at the same time, or um, cutting out all four arcs of one color at a time. So you end up with enough for four different sets of rainbows if you're changing the colors like I did. So this card that I'm about to make in front of you, uh, the colors will be in a different order. And that's why, is because I didn't want to waste um, the amount of cardstock. It's one of the beautiful things about this. So, another supporting character in our card today is the 3D Hive folder. And I've decided I wanted to use the back. It kind of rem reminded me of a baby quilt, an old-fashioned baby quilt. So that's why I picked this embossing folder. Then I used the Taylor tags. I'm, I'm not saying that word right. Let me look it up real quick. It's in our dies in the annual catalog. It is almost there. Oh, come on. I know it's there. I know that T-A-I-L-O-R, oh, there it is, tailor-made tags. So I'm using that for the sentiment here. And then I will stamp the <coughs> decoration on each one of these arches, arcs, arches, arcs, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And see, I'm in a slightly different color arrangement than I was before. I think it still works great. So here, I stamped on three out of four. Um, I will do the same again. I could keep my patterns in the same order that I did and still tie my ribbon to this one instead. So I will do that. That away. And there I am using that little heart stamp again. My, <clears throat> my colors, so this is a top fold card just like the last one was. All three of these are. We have Pool Party, Balmy Blue, Mint Macaron, Coastal Cabana. And I'm using Coastal Cabana ink on all three, on all stamping. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these hearts. And just follow it down. I'm not worried about making it too even, but 
Okay, I felt myself stick that whole thing in there. Try that again. The, thank you, Sonia. I'm glad that you like it. Um, the tags are really handy. I don't have it in here, but if you saw that card that I made on Monday, it's from, that's uh, one of these tags that I used on the pocket card. I think you did see that. I think that you were on there. I'm holding this down now because I felt like I was just getting a little crazy. And each one of these kind of look big, but once you apply them to the card, they're actually not. Or in my opinion, they're not. Okay, do I feel like I need to add something right there? Right there. And right there. So there are the hearts. Next I will add there's some um, little dots. Let me get these out of the way. And these are super dinky, super, super dinky little stamps. So where are my dots? I didn't use the raindrops because, I don't know, I didn't, it didn't hit me <laughs> as what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna skip that one, just like I did here. And I'm using, the again, the Coastal Cabana on everything. What I did earlier is I kind of went in a zigzag pattern and then I went back and I filled it in. And I could probably even just leave it like that, but I won't. So my 40th high school reunion is coming up. Just saw a post about that earlier today. What they've been planning it, it's, it's not new, but just saw the reminder. Now the other texture here that I'm going to use are these little lines, these little broken lines. And I'm just going to go back and forth. I think my husband is watching horse racing. Here we go. Hmm. We're going to call that good. All right. So I use dimensionals to apply these to the embossed card layer. You know, while my ink is open, I might as well just go ahead and stamp my tag. And then I can close that ink pad up. And until it's time for me to decorate the inside. So again, my sweet little baby, one happy family. And these colors are unisex. I think they could be, see, I would have had an aura if I wasn't careful. I'm being a little bit careless today, evidently. Clearly, with embossing powder all over the place. Ah, oh, there it is again. Let me just see. Hmm. Crooked, of course, it was crooked. I'm gonna flip it over and use the other side. Oh, I didn't cut an extra of this one. Did I? I'm double checking. Double checking. I'm just flipping it over. Oh, no. 
it's dirty. I'm going to get out my mini cut and emboss machine, friends. This is what it's like sometimes, right? Um, Got to pull that back out and make sure I use the right tag. I am going to close up my ink now because I will make a mess for sure. For sure. These are so simple. It's, it's silly that I'm making these kind of mistakes. But you know what? It just is. I still like the cards that I made. that and that <clears throat> so speaking of the mini that's the thing that I forgot to mention earlier I mentioned about the kits being or the the make and takes being free with a $35 purchase I mentioned do you find it? I use it all the time absolutely all the time I can't wait till they have the magnet plate too <laughs> I use it all of the time, hands down. Um, so this, the make and takes free with the $35 purchase. If you go to a $50 purchase, the, um, I'm giving away the tutorial bundle. And also it puts your name in a drawing for a mini cut and emboss machine. Sorry, that was a stamp with Tia uh, offer, not a stamping up offer. Let's see if that tag, where did I put the tag again? Oh, there it is. It will fit on that piece of paper. I just pulled my, my very fancy scrap bin. <laughs> You know what I should do is I usually have the best luck if I stamp my sentiment and then die cut around it and that way I get it straight. So I'm going to do that. Where'd I put? Oh, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that real quick. This is how I normally do it. But earlier I got away with it. So, talked myself into believing I'd get away with it again. There we go. So see, it, it, that was crooked for sure. But when I put my tag on there, I will tape it in place. And when I say tape it in place, I mean I will use my post-it tape, which is not on my table because I wasn't expecting to die cut anything. Here it is. Make sure I don't have embossing powder on it like I did on everything else. All right. So I believe that was the size. And see, I can just, can you see? I can just adjust this until it is just right. Tape that in place. Post-it tape so it comes right off, doesn't doesn't hurt anything. I will roll this. Of course, I've got everything in the way. Now, you're seeing me hold down. You do have to hold down the mini differently than you do your big cut and emboss machine, but um, my tabletop here is a false tabletop, and so when I use the cut and emboss machine, sometimes it slides. Yeah, the post-it tapes are the bomb, <laughs> for sure. Okay. There are no accidents, right? These are all opportunities to show a way of handling a situation. There we go. Look at how straight that is. How did I do that? Ta-da! All right. Now we're back in business. And let's put that crooked one back in the garbage. All right, now I can 
bring this, what I said looked like a, a quilted baby blanket from the Hive 3D folder. And I'm gonna start with the littlest arch and line it up. Oh, oh, that's right, I have to put the dimensionals on. But what I'm going to do as I apply each one of these is I'm gonna line up the bottom and the side and get pro progressively bigger. And my dimensionals, here they are. You're seeing me go through a lot of dimensionals today, but I have them, so it's okay. Whoops. They do fit. You just have to turn them so that it's flat edge to flat edge. And let me flip that over and make sure it doesn't show. It does not. There we go. All right, so the first one. I had originally thought that I was going to mix pool party and gold together, gold foil. But I ended up using the rose gold here and the gold and copper on the other one. I thought I'd better switch that up a bit. So, I think I have, I didn't go looking for it. I'm pretty sure I, I dumped that gold embossing powder. I'm pretty sure I have another container of it. That was crazy. Never, ever, ever done that before. I don't even know what set everything in motion. Something did. All right, lining up that bottom, lining up that side. Just like that. Ta-da, that actually looks a little crooked. Oh, well, it's staying now. It is, my husband, I don't know, about an hour ago told me it, we actually were hitting 70 degrees. Uh, Polly, where are you located at? Are you in the United States or are you elsewhere? Sonia was on here a little bit ago. She's from Montreal, North Carolina. Very nice. So what's the weather like in North Carolina? Hi, TJ. Thank you for joining. And TJ, when is your move? You've got a move coming up. Okay, so I'm using the dimensionals to apply these. One more. So this is this is the card that we're making, and this is so um, TJ, you, 80s and 90s. Yeek, already, we've been in the 50s. So this is the first card that we made, TJ. Pretty. And all of the oh, you leave on Friday. You've had quite the job going on. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hmm, <laughs> thank you. Yep, we have three cards. We have the one with the rose gold, and then I use blenders to color the other two stripes. I used light melon mambo and light cherry cobbler. And then here, I've got mint macaron, balmy blue, 
pool party in Coastal Cabana on white. And the last card is a fairly straightforward, somewhat elegant card, kind of sophisticated. There we go. So there are our rainbow stripes or colors. Next, I am going to grab a piece of this Pool Party, what is the name of this ribbon? Sheer Ribbon, Pool Party Sheer Ribbon. Just cut off a good sized piece. Thread it through. Thank you. Glad everybody likes these cards. So are you all packed up? I'm going to move this off to one side. I'm going to use my scissors. Oh, well, I'm going to use my scissors first to cut my baker's twine. And then to hold down this ribbon while I tie a bow around the ribbon. And, okay, for some reason that's going a little, a little crooked on me. Better hold the card down. There we go, that's better. You think so? I hope so. I'll say a prayer for you that it all goes according to plan. That is a big job. Okay. I think I've got that bow just about even. Ish. Now I will use those scissors to cut those ends. Then I will, the top layer, I'm going to cut at an angle, just a little bit shorter than the one I'm going to cut underneath, a little longer. Now is the perfect time for me to add this to the front of my card base. So my card base was four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. I'm gonna burnish that real quick. And then I'm going to use dimensionals to apply this to my card front. I warned everybody, I was going through a lot of dimensionals tonight or today tonight, depending on where you're watching from. And there we go. I was explaining earlier that I was preparing for this live and I knocked over a a pot of gold embossing powder. It went in the carpet, it went in my toolbox, it went all over the table, it went all over these stamps, which are, you know, have a sticky texture. Holy moly. That was quite the uh run around to get everything cleaned up. And then I was optimistic and thought I could do it in an hour. Ha 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 ha. Okay, is that straight-ish? Yeah, I think it is. All right. Yeah. 
Don't be jealous. <laughs> I'm just now starting to be able to laugh about it. Like, uh, like Polly was saying, thank goodness for crafting. It really relieves stress. All right. I'm just using a couple of uh, glue dots, mini glue dots, on the back towards the upper end here. And I'm just going to mess around until I feel like I've hit the angle that I want it to be. And I, I actually think that's pretty cute right there. So there is my tag. I'm now going to go ahead and add my dots. And this is fun. These dots are the new 2022 through 2024 in color matte decorative dots. And what's really cool about these dots, say for instance, take a look, it's, it's um, in some colors, it's more obvious than other colors. This is Sweet Sorbet and see how this first row of colors on the far left are much deeper than those on the right. So they're kind of an ombre effect and you can kind of mix them up. So that's why I chose to use these. I'm not actually using any Tahitian Tide in this card, but because they were in varying degrees of intensity or sat color saturation, I felt like I could get away with using it on this card. So that's what I'm doing. Um, yep. I'll put oh okay. I'm not gonna get frustrated. <laughs> mm, not worth it, right? So it looks like I used five on here earlier. And I'm just going to put them in this okay, this is being silly. Oh, I remember that from before. This um my putty end on my take my pick tool doesn't work with these particular dots. I meant to ask some of my friends if they had noticed that, and I, I haven't asked anybody yet. And... Oh, come on. Seriously. TJ, what is the tool that you're using to place the dots? This is the take your pick tool, and it's really cool. I'm gonna take a minute just to show it to you really quick. So it comes with a cap on each end. This end has clay in the end, and you turn this just to pull out a little bit of the clay, and I use that clay either for picking up my dots and placing them where I want them. Earlier, I was using them to pick up the paper um, hearts that I was using on the first card and holding holding it like this while I was putting adhesive on the back. Also, if you, you know how you use the Versamark ink and then you put your embossing powder on? Well, I've used this to pick up stray strands of the embossing powder before I heat set it. That works really good for that. Then this end has the pointy tip, which you can use for piercing or picking things up with. The other end has a little spatula, which I've got to be really honest, I almost never use, mostly because I forget it's there. And, forgive me while I bend over one second, there is this optional tool, so all of that comes together with the caps. Um, as a tool when you purchase it. It's the take your pick tool. Or you can buy an additional item. You unscrew that putty end, and you can buy replacements of this putty, by the way. And you screw on this brush. And then when you have some die cuts that have a lot of little pieces, it comes with this foam. This brush comes with this foam. And you roll it over there and it helps <clears throat> It helps get all the little pieces out of your die cut. So it's a die cut brush. So this is an amazing tool. I love it. I use it 
every time I make a card. The only time I wouldn't is if I were maybe doing simple stamping on a flat card base with nothing else. That would, might, would maybe be the only example I could give you. I use it for everything. Okay, uh, let's see, and I needed to grab one more of these. And just, there we go. Oops, what happened? My adhesive is, oh, my adhesive stayed on the sheet. Well, that doesn't work. Oh, that's because I was trying to use the pokey tip to pick it up. I can see the adhesive on this one. There we go. So here are my five dots. There's my ribbon. Now I need to decorate the inside of my card. So aren't these wonderful? So instead of them just using that for Tahitian Tide, I've just mixed it with all these other blues and greens. I think that's pretty cool. All right. What did I do to the inside of this card? I bet, yep, I didn't do it. So I better do it now. And I am looking for... piece of cardstock to cut. So I have a few layers on the front here and I don't want to have, even though I've used the thick basic white, oh thank you Sonia, um, even though I've used the thick basic white, th this still has quite a bit of substance to the front and this is only a single layer in the back. So I'm just going to add one layer to the inside and I should have already had it cut but I don't. So my apologies, everybody. I'm going to go with five and a quarter by four. I'm not putting a mat on the inside. I didn't put a mat on the inside of the other one either. Well, let's see. On the inside of this one, I used those hearts going back and forth. So maybe on this one, I'll just use the little dots. Just so they're not matchy-matchy. And I can get these out of the way. And again, this is a top fold card. Let's see, yeah, dots. There they are. And I think I'm going to do what I did when I was stamping on the rainbow arches. I started off by stamping a zigzag, and then I went back and filled it in. I think I'll just do a zigzag and leave it. So no DSP on any of these cards. Rinse this off. Even though it's not used on the next card, I. There we go. Like to put it away. Grab my adhesive. We're almost done with card two, and then we just have one more card left to do. And again, I, I've already die cut everything. And it, actually, the last card is the most simple card. Oh, famous last words, right? <coughs> See how easy that was? Plenty of room to write a nice message. Or if you had an additional sentiment that you wanted to put on the inside, that would work too. Or do both. All right, card number two is done. So, card number one, 
card number two. And here we are. This is going to be card number three. And this is where this was going to be heat embossed. And things went awry. So let me get my samples pulled up here. Not my samples, but my my pieces. Oh, well evidently there was my extra piece right there. I had it stacked on the wrong card. That's all right, didn't take that long. So I'm going to start, so my card base is exactly the same as the others. It's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. This is basic white. My card front is gonna be basic white matted with basic black. So my card front is three and three quarters by five. This is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So these, um, like I mentioned before, the dies cut one cut four pieces of one color at a time. So in order to not waste cardstock, here I go copper, gold, copper, gold. Here I'm going to go gold, copper, gold, copper. It's just a matter of um, not wasting cardstock. All right, and here I'm I'm adhering this directly to the card front. No dimensionals used here. I will use dimensionals to apply this card front to the card base. So just a dot. of adhesive, of adhesive, um, in, I, I put it in four locations, and then picking it up carefully, so I kind of aimed, oh, not, I mean, the, this is not middle point right here, but it's, a, just shy of middle point, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Again, this is a super clean, somewhat sophisticated, in my opinion, looking card. Okay. I'm going to get my nose down here and hopefully I don't stick my head right in the camera. My finger's touching something sticky and that's why I keep accidentally snagging it. I think that looks about even. And I have an eraser that I can go back and if I end up with any adhesive showing, I can fix that. And same thing on all four of these, just a little bit of adhesive, just a small dot. It's a skinny piece, so you don't want it squishing out the sides. And now I am lining up my two bottoms. Like such. And yes, I am actually going to stamp after I've adhered these on because that's how I lined up my sentiment. Some people would say that was just the wrong thing to do, but it's how I chose to do it. All right. And, oh, yeah, I, I thought I saw some heavy adhesive on here. I'm gonna go in and just Use a piece of paper to smear that down. There we go. There's 
There we are. One more to go. And I love the metallics and then that black mat. So pretty. Okay. At this point, yes, my fingers are very sticky. And I see some adhesive squishing out right there. So like I said, I, I can, I do have a rubber eraser that I thought I had out. Well, I know it's out because it's not in my bed. I have a second rubber eraser, but it's not the one I normally use. That's all right. So I'm going to come in with my fingernail and kind of remove that adhesive. I'm gonna let that dry before I use my rubber eraser. And the rubber eraser just picks it right up. It's kind of, I like my other one better. It's got a better edge on it, but I don't see it. It, no doubt, laying on a floor or someplace when I had to move everything around from dumping the adhesive. Okay, or not adhesive, but dumping the uh, embossing powder. All right, I'm gonna use basic black. I'm using a You Make Me Happy. And I'm going to come off to the side just a little bit. I'm gonna pull this a little closer to me and hope I can see this. Thankfully, it's kind of a script, so if I'm not exactly straight, but it looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm purposefully offset so that I have room for a bow. This sentiment, so the other sentiment came from the one happy family that I had mentioned to you before. This stamp this sentiment actually came from the Rainbow of Happiness. All right, next, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this to my matte black, or my um, basic black. husband and I are going to, we've been running like crazy for a couple days, so tonight we're turning off everything and gonna watch a movie and I don't think he's figured out which movie it is yet. And I don't care, I don't, I, I just wanna sit down and kind of not think. Do you ever have that day? Oh, that is actually a little bit crooked, but once that bow is on there, I don't think it's gonna show. Okay. There's that, there's that. All right, so for the bow, I am going to use, I'm using this, but I'm looking for the package that it was in. It comes in a sil, uh, it's a duo pack, silver and gold. And of course it's now unraveling in my hands. I don't see the package here. It might be one of the things that got put away to get out of my way. But I can look that up and tell you in just a, actually I will look it up and tell you right now. Because if I don't, I might forget. I'm still looking to see if I can see the package. It is, Do, do, do. I'm in the back of the annual catalog. It 
It's in the ribbon section. It is right here. It's simply elegant and it comes in silver and gold in the same package. So tying my, actually I'm gonna scoot in just a little bit. I want a little longer tail than that. Oh yeah. Yes, oh, for sure, man, it's needed. It is needed. I'm gonna scroll up so that I can see the rest of the comment. I can only see part of it. Okay, my finger is dragging on the screen. Yeah, unplugging is the best some days. Yep, yep. Yeah, man. And it's not that I'm overworked or anything. I We just ran like crazy for a couple of days. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of got used to having quieter days during the pandemic. And so now sometimes I get a little tired, <laughs> a little faster. Just working this back and forth until I have it the amount of tightness at the knot that I want. And then that's, I like that a lot. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to apply my glue dot using my take your pick tool. I'm going to use that to pick up my glue dot and I'm going to, um, because this knot's not terribly big, I'm actually going to roll up that glue dot into a smaller orb. And I am going to place that at the end of that last copper arc. I'm going to hold, sometimes these get a little crazy if they want to go their own direction. If you hold them in place and then put them in that glue dot, sometimes that will help kind of, or not. In this case, it's not. It's okay. And then I'm going to pull those down and cut them even. So one of the things I haven't mentioned yet is normally I'm live. I do a Facebook Live on Mondays. And this Monday I'm having a procedure on my back. I think most people are aware that I've had a pretty severe back injury take going on. So I have not yet decided if I'm going to try. I don't want to overpromise. I think I'm going to go ahead and place that there. Um, anyway, I'm having a procedure on Thursday afternoon. Let's see, I'm going to do these in reverse. I, I said Thursday, I meant to say Monday. It's Monday afternoon. And there we go. I Maybe I will just switch it to Tuesday because I'm supposed to start feeling better by the next day. They have to test where they're working at the first two times. So it's not a true procedure. It's like a preliminary procedure or a test to see if it works. The, if they're getting the right area first before they do the actual procedure. So anyway, so Monday I will probably not be on. It may be Tuesday instead. Probably for me, best for me just to plan it that way. See how cute that is? I'm going to put this up on dimensionals. Because I have all the other cards, so why wouldn't I do this one too? But I don't, I know some people have said, why don't you just skip it if you're not going to be available? But I don't, I don't like to. 
if I miss doing it, then I I personally miss doing it. Um, it's it's part of my week, so that's why I I like to try to get it fit back in. Now this one I did not decorate the inside of the card yet, so I need to think about that for a second. Let's see, what do I want to do? I am not going to heat emboss. <laughs> That was a joke. It's real. <laughs> it's, it, excuse me, it's real, but it, it was a little bit of a joke. Tongue in cheek. Um, let's see. Make sure that's opening the right direction. Centering this on the front. There. That looks nice. Super simple, right? You just have to do the die cutting. And. Here is, I have a black mat for the inside of this one, and then here is the card that will go on the front. So let me see. I do have, there is this sentiment that I could put on the inside that says, sending you a rainbow of happiness, but the outside says, you make me happy. So what if I would use, I could just use, you make this world a better place. That would be pretty easy. I think that's what I'll do. I'll stamp that in the center. And I'm tempted. But then I, what color would I do that in? I, I'm, I can't heat emboss at this point. I would lose my mind. So I'm just going to <laughs> stamp a sentiment. Ah, oh, you all understand. I know I'm not the only one to go through that. Make sure I'm going the right direction since I already removed my grid paper. I could I could do I do have some dots here. I could just use some dots like in the corner here, the corner here, and the sentiment in the center. I think that's what I'll do. You make this world a better place. We could say that to a lot of people, couldn't we? That's actually very elegant and simple as well. I like it. Hmm. Let's see. I don't want to use black dot or black hearts. That's why I'm gonna go with the You know, I'm not in love with that. Maybe I will do the hearts. I, I will. I'm just going to get out of my own head. Ink those up. Make sure they're turned the right way. And I'll just do a few right there. And a few right here and call it good. All right, now I'm going to adhere this to this basic black mat. Close up this ink. I'm almost done with the third card, friends. You really love the last, really? Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you like it. I will get these um, dimensions and everything up on my blog. It'll probably be tomorrow at this point. And then I will turn around and post it on my Facebook like I usually do, just letting everybody know that it's, it's up and available. I need to send out a newsletter this week too, or tomorrow too, so I might well, actually, I probably won't include this video on that because I don't want to let the entire world know that I dumped gold embossing powder. <laughs> okay. You all have been great. I appreciate that. 
So Polly, do you already have the uh, Rainbow of Happiness stamp set? So that you can just jump right in and, and make these? I think you told me that you're a demo. Let's see. All right, so here we are. Clean this up just a little bit so that you can see my desktop. And here we go. So here are the cards. What do you think? You like them? Oh, I'm way too high for you to see. There we go. You do have the stamp set. Very good. But you've not used it. Oh, well, good. I hope, yeah, I hope you'll turn around and use it real soon. Yeah. I used it for it, uh, the launch of my mini catalog in January. And I had... Um, couple of celebration parties and of course there was a celebration designer series paper that went with it so um, anyway well I'm glad that you like it oh thank you TJ yay yeah I mean they're they're super sweet and they really weren't difficult so this one used the adhesive foam sheets to give lift and dimension this one used dimensionals um, and then I stamped the uh, patterns on each one, used the Hive 3D embossing folder, and then this one, oh, and then this one also used the uh, rose gold, and then this one used the gold and copper. So, well, thank you for joining me, everybody. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon, evening, <laughs> rest of your weekend <laughs> and um, big hugs thank you for joining me talk to you soon bye bye